This is the Information Nation. I'm your host, Ken, on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com, theinformationnation.com. Glad to see everybody's here tonight in the chat room. Ancient and Chris and Cracker, and John Connor, Road Dogging, Gov Hater, me, all you people, all you great people in the chat room tonight. That's wonderful. A lot of anons in there. Good to see that people are showing up and uh, giving us a listen. Hey, before we really get started tonight, I wanted to um, let you people know about a nice show that we have on. It was on at midnight tonight. Not midnight. Well, it was midnight Sunday. And that's the investigative journal with Greg Szymanski. Uh, Greg is a satirist, a writer, a reporter. He lived in uh, Rome for six years. Does a very good show. He's on at midnight on Sunday. That's 11 p.m. Saturday night, Central Time. And that's um, 9 o'clock on the left coast on Saturday nights. Tune in. Give Greg a listen. I think you'll enjoy it. It's very informative. Very good show for a few night owls out there who like to just kind of hang around late in the, the late hours of the evening and get some education. <clears throat> Got a lot of stuff going on lately. Wanted to start with uh, <laughs> more erosion from the communist state of Illinois. More of our freedoms are being attempted to be taken away. Um, they want a statewide handgun registry and ammunition tax bill. And this is uh, something that Chicago Mayor Rahm, I'm an idiot, Emanuel wants. He wants everybody to register their handguns and to pay a 2% tax surcharge. I'm sorry, not a tax. It's a surcharge. And it's to be deposited for a high crime trauma center. Yeah, that's just what we need. I got a better idea, Emanuel. You wouldn't need the 2% tax if you just let everybody carry like 49 of the other states, you meathead. He thinks he's daily. He thinks he's running the state. He thinks he's running the country from Chicago, that cesspool of corruption. That's where we get all our criminals from. We import them from Chicago. And I don't care... If you people in Illinois, you people downstate, you people in the federal government are listening to this program, you can take that cesspool in Chicago and you can push it right into Lake Michigan. I don't care. It's a piece of garbage. And then you can go down to Springfield and you can push them idiots into the ocean too. Because all they do is take away people's rights. They take away people's rights and... Sit back and laugh their ass off about it. And then they steal everything they possibly can. <clears throat> you know, I got, a, I, I got a question for people. Getting a little bit off track here, but I got a question for people. Is Obamacare really the law of the land? I have people in a chat room. Throw me something in there, will you? Is it the law of the land, Obamacare? Because I say it's not. And I'm not even going to talk constitutionally about it. <clears throat> How can it be a law if it doesn't apply equally to everybody? I would like to see them explain that to me. A law means that it affects me and it affects you exactly the same way. But... You can't turn around. You, you can't give somebody say, well, it's going to affect me, but you get a waiver. Then it's not a law. Then it's a preference. Then it's something that they feel like doing, but they really have no legal ground to stand on. So they can take their Obamacare and they can stick it right up their chocolate whiz -wang. And I know the people in the chat room love that. There's the chocolate whiz -wang for you. Hi, JJ. It's um, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to force the people into something and then turn around and give your best friends a break. It's only going to affect, 
it's only going to affect the scum peons that work. But my rich buddies don't have to pay for it. And apparently that's the same way they think about the people of, 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 of faith. You know, because they push that stuff. Same thing. We'll get more into that a little bit later. Because I found one. <laughs> I love this. An animal rights group says drone shot down. A remote-controlled aircraft owned by an animal rights group was reportedly shot down near Broxton Bridge Plantation Sunday near Eckhart, South Carolina. Steve Hendy, president of Shark, <laughs> showing animals respect and kindness. Idiot. Said his group was preparing to launch their microcopter drone to video what he called a live pigeon shoot on Sunday when law enforcement officers and an attorney claiming to represent the privately owned plantation near Eckhart tried to stop the aircraft from flying. It didn't work. What Shark was doing was perfectly legal, Hindi said in a news release. Once they knew nothing was going to stop us, the shooting stopped and the cars lined up to leave. He said animal rights groups decided to send a drone up anyway. <laughs> Seconds after it hit the air... Numerous shots rang out, Hindi said in the release, <clears throat> as an act of revenge for us shutting down the pigeon slaughter. They had to shoot down our copter. <laughs> no, you idiot. <laughs> they thought it was a pigeon. You didn't stop anything. Now, I love it when animal rights groups get it shoved up their keister. Because they're idiots to begin with. Pigeons are some of the dirtiest birds out there. If anybody has ever lived in a city where pigeons happen to really cohabitate, there are pigeon droppings everywhere and people get sick from it. And these idiots are out there going, oh, well, you've got to show animals respect and kindness. They did. They shot down your helicopter. They didn't shoot you. So they showed animals, you animals, kindness and respect. You fly your damn... Th this is what we talk about with the drones. Drones are everywhere. Hey, <clears throat> I looked it up after I found this article. And you can find some pretty cotton-picking high-tech drones for the, for the private people for around 300 bucks. Flies right off your iPhone. And these are some pretty... I mean, they got a, a front-facing camera, and they got a bottom-facing camera. So you could just... If you were going to, like, an Occupy, you could take that thing and lift off and fly over the top of the crowd and take pictures. And, hell, you could be a block away and be flying that thing and taking... And you get the uh, video feed right through your iPhone. So you could be taking pictures of the cops beating the hell out of people. And then when they come running up, everybody stand there with your iPhone, let them try to figure out who in the hell's controlling the helicopter. <laughs> but I love this. We had it out here one time, a couple of years back. Some idiot used to buzz the hunters on a private hunting uh, um, club with his uh, ultralight till they shot him down. Then he screamed and hollered it was attempted murder. They put him in jail for two years. But these people don't seem to understand. Leave the, leave the average guy alone. The average guy's going out there. He's got a pigeon hunt going on. So what? What these idiots don't understand is when these people, whether it's pigeons or whether it's quail or geese or whatever in the heck the, the critter is, they might kill 100 of them and they've got 500 of them that have been bred because they replenish. They are better environmentalists than these asshats that are running around out there with their drones. So I think that was pretty cool. I like the fact that they shot down their drone. <clears throat> I wish two or three of them were in it, but I shouldn't say that. Probably just shot it down with a shotgun. They didn't use like a sidewinder or something. And we're up to the first break. And we're back. <clears throat> it's Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio. Just to give you a little heads up, <clears throat> next week, we're trying to get the logistics worked out, and if everything does work out, next week I will have the gentleman on that did the uh, movie A Noble Lie, The Oklahoma City, 1995. Going to have the producer on, the director, and uh, hopefully... Um, one other gentleman that works on the film. I can't uh, seem to have lost the darn thing here. But anyhow, 
Oh, here it is. Nope, that's not it either. Anyhow, that should be next week. So we're trying to finish up with the logistics. Once we get that finished up, uh, they will be on the show for the full two hours. And you get to learn about some more government propaganda. You get to learn about another false flag operation where they killed American citizens and walked away scot-free. Isn't it wonderful? Nobody goes to jail in this country. You know, other countries, they take their leaders, they drag them out on the streets, they cut their heads off, they set them on fire. This country here, we give them more money and put them in another job. We're doing a hell of a job here. Yeah, we just keep on doing it. What the heck? We don't need anything. Once we're, once they've got us all in FEMA camps, who the hell cares anymore? Then you get to go in your little striped uniform and walk outside and go, you can go wipe their butt for them. Because uh, that's about what's going to happen. Anywho, Nancy Pelosi. Everybody knows how much I love Nancy. In her weekly press briefing, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, 8th District, California, was asked whether or not she believes the Catholic Church in Washington, D.C., a self-insured institution, should have to pay for contraception coverage for its employees. <clears throat> now, remember something. She is, she supposedly, she is supposedly a Catholic. And she said, I firmly believe and I want to remove all doubt in anyone's mind where I am on this subject, Pelosi said. This is an issue about women's health. And I believe that women's health should be covered in all the insurance plans that are out there. Later, she says, yes, I think all institutions that give health insurance should cover full range of health insurance, health insurance issues for women. And I think it's really curiouser and curiouser. She talks funny. That as we get further into this debate, the Republican leadership of this Congress thinks it's appropriate to have a hearing on a subject of women's health and pur purposely exclude women from the panel. What else do we need to know? Do, they, uh, do you need to know about the subject? Well, I'll tell you what, Nancy. <laughs> it makes my heart purple urine for you because very plainly when the people told you we didn't want that piece of garbage in the first place what was your statement oh yeah we gotta pass it so you know what's in it you bimbo what are you people in the 8th district of California gonna wake up and throw this old broad out she's nuts she's as loony as a she's as crazy as a bed bug but oh yeah she's uh all concerned about women's health. Apparently now a woman goes out and gets pregnant. It is a health issue. You know, women have the right. Yeah, well, women have the right not to have sex or not to have unprotected sex. But yeah, it's, um, you know, she goes, woman goes out and she plays around with her boyfriend and she gets pregnant and she just goes to the abortion clinic and has an abortion and that's okay and that's all fine with her. And she wants me to pay for it. I don't think it's fine, lady. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. I don't live in a free country anymore. I'm just another slave. Anyhow. And that's what it's coming to. This government is just going to keep on telling us what we're going to do. They're just going to tell you, you know, what kind of car to drive, how many miles per gallon it should get. What you should eat. I'm beginning to wonder if you grew a garden in your backyard and you used all the GMO products, you know, all the stuff from Monsatan, if they would really bother you. You know, they'd come in and say, where'd you get them seeds, boy? I got them from Monsatan, dude. Oh, okay, you're fine. This is all about the money. It's all about the money. I've told you that ever since I started this show. You want to know what's going on? Follow the money. Follow the money. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about uh, Haiti. And they had that hurricane, earthquake, whatever the heck they wanted to call it down there. And billions of dollars were dumped into Haiti. And Haiti right now is just as bad off as they were as immediately after the earthquake. 
And it's amazing to me. We had all of this, all of this money just dumped into there, and they're still as bad off as they were, you know, back when it happened. But 11 months after the tsunami ravaged Japan, a series of pictures reveal the incredible progress being made to clean up the devastation. Now, this comes from the Daily Mail in the United Kingdom. It's on my website. Click on the article, go to their website, and take a look at these photographs. Areas that were totally devastated are cleaned up. Reconstruction is going on. They can do that in Japan and in Haiti where billions have been dumped in, I don't think three bricks have been moved. So who's got the money, honey? It's that same old thing again. Show me the money. Show me the money. We are being raped. We are being screwed, blued, and tattooed by this government and all of these so-called relief agencies out there. And here the Japanese are rebuilding. I'm, I'm willing to bet in another year you won't even know that that tsunami hit. And the people in Haiti will still be in the same boat that they're in right now. But that's okay. They're just slaves. They're slaves like we are. I don't think they even sweep the damn streets down in Haiti. I saw some pictures not too long ago of Haiti, the way it looks today. And the way it looked then. <laughs> you'd swear they're the same picture. But the Japanese, see, the Japanese are, are kind of different type of people. They don't wait for these asshats to go out there and help them. They're not standing by the shore going, help us, help us. No, they turned around and said, screw you, we'll do it ourselves. And I'm not picking on the people in Haiti. So don't, don't get me wrong about this. Because those poor people are just as screwed as everybody else. All of that money that the American people and other other people had dumped into that, into dumped into all the relief agencies, is in somebody's pocket. I want to know who's got the money and when he's going to jail and if he's ever getting out. Oh, but gee, wasn't that George Bush and Bill Clinton? No, couldn't have been two former former presidents that went down there and collected all of this money, and all of a sudden the money's gone. I must be a conspiracy theorist. That's it. I'm putting two and two together and coming up with four when the government says it should be five. I'm a, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to drag you people off into a conspiracy theory here. And we've returned. This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com. I don't know how many people have been following the election, uh, well, the primaries. And, um, oh, you got Nitwit, I mean, Mitt Romney and uh, Santorum, Gingrich, and Ron Paul. And according to the Daily Mail, here again, the UK, Jeb Bush could emerge as GOP nominee at a brokered convention, says Top Republican. I didn't put anything else on there because... You want to read that? It's on the website. But if you think about it, if they can keep these guys fighting amongst each other and they all kind of split this whole thing up, then you come into what's called a brokered convention where all the delegates get together and they kind of go in the little room there and they smoke a couple of cigars and have a few drinks and get all silly. And then they come out and they say, hey, we're going to nominate so-and-so. So this would kind of be a backdoor way of getting Jeb Bush in as the nominee. So we could have Bush 1, Bush 2, and Bush 3. A whole lot of Bush in the White House. Isn't that just what we want? A whole lot of Bush in the White House. I don't know. You're beginning to wonder. Sometimes I think Cracker is right when he says, why bother to vote? That's all rigged anyhow. But... I keep on doing it. I'm One of these days, I'm hoping that, you know, they'll say, oh, Ken voted for this guy. We'll put him in office. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> you start watching this stuff. I, I, I've been catching a little bit more of uh, some of the news channels. And uh, they just will not talk about Ron Paul. 
They just will not do it. They might mention his name in passing. They'll talk, uh, you know, they'll talk 10 minutes about Mitt Romney and they'll talk about nine minutes about uh, Rick Santorum and then they'll talk about nine or eight minutes about Newt Gingrich and then they'll go, oh yeah, and don't forget Ron Paul. And then they'll move on. And uh, I think they ought to take away their FCC license because very plainly, they're rigging an election. This is fixing an election. But we keep putting up with it because we haven't got uh, got enough people yet to slap them down. But that's okay. The way alternative radio and alter alternative news is growing, and they're losing their listeners and we're gaining their listeners because people want to know what the heck is going on. They want to hear everything. They don't want to hear just one side. You know, Fox News and their fair and balanced. Yeah, it's fair for them to give us their idea of what's balanced. I don't know. It's uh, It gets goofier by the day. Oh, for those of you who have still have a mortgage and still have a house to go to, hidden mortgage fee paying for payroll tax cut. I think I covered a little bit of this last week. Uh, just before Christmas, American workers got a rare gift from Washington politicians. A current payroll tax cut would be extended for two more months. At the time, both President Barack Obama and House Speaker John Boehner lauded the move to avoid tax increase for millions of working Americans. But there's still something the politicians weren't bragging about, and that's the fact they're paying for the two-month tax cut with what has turned into a brand new fee on home buyers. The new fee is a minimum one-tenth of one percent on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac back loans and is likely to go much higher. It will be imposed for the next 10 years on most mortgages and refinancings, and it lasts for the life of the loan. So you get a two-month tax cut, you get a 30-year stick in a keister. For every $200,000, it amounts to an extra $15 a month. It's bad news for Patty Anderson, who's buying a home in Virginia. Anderson will save a couple hundred dollars for having her payroll tax cut extended, but her mortgage broker told her the new fee would cost her almost $9,500. I was absolutely startled that it would be that it would add up to that much, she said. The $35.7 billion collected in fees won't go into Social Security fund to replace the lost payroll tax. It goes to the general treasury where Congress can spend it however they please. <laughs> Scum-sucking bottom feeders are stealing from us again. Now, I'm not surprised by this because that's all these scum-sucking bottom feeders do. They just keep on stealing from the people. We'll steal, we'll steal, and we'll steal some more. We'll come up with a new thing. We'll say, hey, in order to pay for this tax cut, uh, we've got to do this. And the sheeple out there go, oh, yeah, I can understand that, man. Yeah, that, that's cool. But they don't tell you is it's not going back into Social Security. It's going into the general fund. That's just like Obamacare. How many of you out there realize they have already spent fifty billion dollars of the money that was supposed that was earmarked for Obamacare? <clears throat> they spent it. They either spent it or they stole it. Kind of the same thing with them, isn't it? But it's just a constant one lie after another after another. I think the law should be passed to say, okay, we're going to do this project. That's point number one, okay? Everybody agrees we're going to do this project. Now, how are we going to fund it? Oh, we're going to fund it by doing this. Okay, fine. Now, that money is earmarked for this project and cannot be spent on any damn thing else. But they won't do that because they'd all stand there shake and pee in their pants. Well, how am I going to get all my special shit done, man? The same way everybody else does. Go get a job, you, you meathead. But here it goes again. You know, they don't have to take care of Social Security and, and make changes in it. They're destroying it the way it is. They're just totally destroying it. But that's okay. Because they are no longer our representatives. They are our rulers 
these people rule over us. Yeah, come to my house. I'll show you how far your ruling goes. You can take that and shove it up your chocolate whizwang. Oh, Team Obama, Department of Justice, team up with new ACORN group implicated in voter fraud. And this is from Judicial Watch, Red, White, and Blue News. Maybe this could be the reason Dems are fighting so hard against states requiring ID to vote. After all, you need an ID to buy liquor, certain cleaning supplies, cash checks, rent a house, get utilities, open a bank account, even buy cigarettes. Yet the Dems would have you believe that the GOP is, a ra is racist for legislation requiring ID to curb voter fraud. Really? In the 2012 election, just months away, Acorn, the Acorn Connected Group, Project Vote. And the Obama campaign, campaign ally is redoubling its efforts to undermine the integrity of the 2012 elections. And they are evidently doing it with the participation of the Obama White House and the Department of Justice. In January, Judicial Watch obtained additional documents about meetings held between Estelle Rogers, director of the advocacy group for ACORN organization, Project Vote, and officials from the Obama White House and the Department of Justice. Somebody should be going to jail there, dude. How about it, Mr. Obama? We'll put you right next to Ben. You know Ben. Ben Dover. Put you in the same cell with him. He'll just clean your pipes for you. <laughs> I mean, you're doing it to 300 million American people. Why don't you get it done to yourself? You know, these people belong in jail. They don't belong in the White House. They don't belong in the Department of Justice. This voter fraud is getting to the point where it's ridiculous. And ACORN, why in the hell are we funding ACORN or Project Vote? Why are we doing that? Why do we have to fund private organizations? These, these people, oh, but they help the other people. No, they don't help the other people. They steal elections. They have been accused and, and found guilty in some cases of extreme voter fraud, and the government, the White House, just dances right in there with them. I mean, that race, racist piece of garbage we've got in the White House right now, yes, you, Barack Obama, Barry Satoro, or whatever other alias you go by. And we've returned. This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com. And I'm going back to talking about the, <laughs> the racist and thief. And that's about all I can say for this man. He's a racist and he's a thief. He steals our money and he treats us like garbage. And the reason I'm saying that is I want you to listen to, to an announcement that Barack Obama made. I think I played this last week or the week before. Listen to it again. I don't think there's a better time than African American History Month to consider the tremendous progress we've made through the sacrifices of so many, or a better time to commit to meeting the very real challenges we face right now. Every day, I think of the generations of African American men and women who overcame slavery and oppression, risked their own safety to cast a ballot even gave up their lives to help build a country that lived up to its founding principles. Their extraordinary hope, their unwavering determination, changed this country. Their efforts made it possible for somebody like me to be here today. This is another moment where we've got to decide what kind of country we want to be. We can either settle for a country where a shrinking number of people do really well, or we can build a nation where everybody gets a fair shot. Everybody does their fair share and everybody plays by the same rules. This campaign is powered by folks at every level taking ownership where it matters most. Around the kitchen table, in barber shops and beauty salons, in your faith community, at work or at school. And of course, in the voting booth this election day, because we are greater together than we can ever be on our own. Visit AfricanAmericans.BarackObama.com for more information about all the ways you can get involved from attending HBCU organizing workshops to becoming a congregation captain. And say you're ready to keep making history. Thanks, and see you out there.
right out of his own mouth. Right out of his own mouth, that piece of racist garbage. Oh, we're going to do this to the American people. We're going to do this to America. Oh, help me help you. You're not going to help anybody help any do anything. Help me take the greatest country on the face of the earth and fundamentally change it. And he kept that promise. The only promise he's kept. He's slowly but surely, actually more rapidly now, turning us into a third world country. And the American people are standing there going, oh, but when he talks, I get a tingle up my leg. I give you a tingle up your leg. I give you a tingle that'll go all the way to the top of your head. This guy is something else. He steals money from the American people, treats everybody like garbage, and then he turns around and admits in his own words, basically he's a racist. What if we came out with white folk for Ron Paul? All you people out there, all you white folk, you go out there and you vote for Ron Paul. Get it. Join. Get out there. Get the vote out. You know what we'd be called? Racists. But you call this man a racist, and all of a sudden, they turn it on you. You're the racist because you don't like Barack Obama because he's black. No, I don't like Barack Obama because he's a piece of garbage. He's destroying my country. That's why I don't like Barack Obama. He doesn't seem to understand. He's like a 12-year-old with a credit card. I'm just going to spend the dumbest thing come out of it. This man is supposed to be Harvard educated. I want to tell you people out there that got kids that are in college, do not send them to Harvard because apparently they turn out idiots. Oh, you've got to spend your way out of bankruptcy. Huh? Remember that one? We're going to spend our way out of this. How in the hell are you going to spend your way out of it? You haven't got any money, you idiot. Oh, we got to spend our way out of it. And you talk about rigged. I don't know what they're doing to these judges and everything else, but you can't get crap done in court. Not against this man. Yeah, we'll give him four more years. You give this guy four more years, let me tell you something. You're going to be calling him the emperor, Emperor Obama, or King Obama. He'll find a way around the Constitution to just keep staying in office. And nobody will do a damn thing. They brought up in the court, in the lawsuit in Georgia, not only the fact that he has several names, but the fact he's got a Social Security number that comes from a state that he never lived in. The fact, let me look it up here. I'll find it for you real quick. The fact that according to Minor versus Happerset, which is a Supreme Court decision, a natural born citizen was defined as children born to two U.S. citizens, regardless of the location of the birth. This also eliminates Mitt Romney, Mitt Obamacare Romney, or Romney Care Romney, because his, one fa his father was born in Mexico. This also eliminates Marco Rubio, whose parents were born in Cuba. But we can just throw that out the window. <clears throat> we just throw it out the window. Who the hell cares? The American people obviously don't care because they're not up in arms. Of course, that doesn't do you any good anyhow. You go to, go to Washington, D.C., uh -huh. Several hundred thousand of people protest, and Nancy Pelosi walks through the group like she's Moses parting the Red Sea. It's just one truckload of manure after another, after another, after another. And this asshat judge was interesting to read that they can't even find a bio on this guy. And he's the first judge in history to allow somebody who has been charged with contempt of court 
to just walk away. So when you go into court for a traffic violation or anything, just tell them there are no laws in this country, so what in the hell are you bringing me in here for? What the hell do you want? And when the judge really starts to fume, explain it to him. Explain it to him, Lucy. If you're not going to uphold the laws in this country, then why in the hell have we got books? We can get, we can fire all these asshat judges, and we can save a ton of money there. And we might as well get rid of Congress, and we can save a hell of a lot of money there. And we'll just turn it all over to Obama, him and Bernanke. We'll lock them both in the Federal Reserve, and they can sit there and count the money. We have no more laws in this country that mean a damn thing. And I don't care what Bonner says. I don't care what Obama says. I don't care what Harry Reid says. I don't care what Nancy Pelosi says or that old wrinkled up piece of crap, John McCain. Or his buddy, what's his name from the left, from the, uh, from the right coast, um, Lieberman. I don't care what they say anymore because they have they do not impact me in the way that when I was growing up, the way a congressman would say something or a, a senator or the president and you would listen. And today we have no laws. It's just like sit down, shut up and get in the back of the bus. We get crapped on and we're the ones that are floating the bill. The only thing that applies to us anymore is what they say applies to us. And that's it. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter that you're an American citizen. Because they don't care. The only thing they care about is covering their own butt. And that's it. I put a little video on my YouTube channel, and I thought I'd play this for you. Give you something to think about. This is Ken for the Information Nation here on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com. Uh, let me take you back to that YouTube uh, video that we were so rudely interrupted by the top of the hour break. And uh, let's try it all over again. Hello? Ken? Yes? Is this Ken, host of the Information Nation? Yes. Uh, who's this? This is Janet Napolitano from DHS. What can I do for you, Janet? It has been brought to our attention that you've had several videos tagged for copyright infringement. Well, Janet, these videos were submitted under the Fair Use Clause, Title 17, USC, Section 106A-117 of the... The Fair Use Clause is what we tell you it is. Your videos have been very critical of the Obama administration. And it has to stop, do you understand? You can just bite me, Janet. Another terrorist taken care of by Homeland Security. I love this job. <laughs> Poor Janet. They missed. I'm still here. Terrible situation. But I just thought I had to put that up there. Oh. Hey, if you can't have fun with this stuff, what can you do with it? Other than, well, never mind. But that's about the way it is, you know, the, the, all the stuff, the SOPA, the PIPA, the MOUSC, whatever the heck they want to call the, the ACTA. You know, it's, it's to do nothing more than shut the people up. I mean, that's all they want to do. They just want to shut us up. They just want to tell you, don't tell the truth. Just uh, sit down, get to the back of the bus, shut up. We'll take care of everything. And yes, they will. So, 
Let's see what, what else we've got here. We covered that. We covered that. Oh. Catholic League poised to go to war over uh, with Obama over the mandatory birth control payments. Catholic leaders upped the ante Monday, threatening to challenge the Obama administration over the provision of the new health care law uh, that would require all employers, including religious institutions, to pay for birth control. You know, right there, this is some. This is why I say this: Obamacare cannot be a law, because they keep changing it at their whim. And by what he did right there, challenging the the religious institutions, is in direct violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. So, that being said, take your Obamacare and shove it right up your chocolate whiz bang, Obama. You and the missus can go to Hawaii and play with each other for all I care. The, um, <clears throat> it can't be a law. Once again, if they're going to cover, if they're going to give it, give their friends passes and all the rest of this, it's a piece of junk. If the Supreme court does not throw this thing out, then it's time to throw out the Supreme court. Say the magic white and the bird will come down. Now, <clears throat> In Reuters, they had an article, FBI warns of threat from anti-government extremists. So I guess all my, li all my listeners are going to have to leave. That, that wouldn't be good. But um, anti-government extremists opposed to taxes and regulations pose a growing threat to local law enforcement officers in the United States, the FBI warned on Monday. I'm a terrorist. I'm an anti-government extremist. These extremists, sometimes known as sovereign citizens, believe they can live outside any type of government authority, FBI agents said at the news conference. The extremists may refuse to pay taxes, defy government, environmental regulations, and believe the United States went bankrupt by going off the gold standards. Routine encounters with police can turn violent at the drop of a hat, said Stuart MacArthur. Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI's Counterterrorism Division, we thought it was important to increase the visibility of the threat with the state and local law enforcement. He said, why don't you take this and get me out? Here it comes. Shove it up your chocolate whiz -wang. Just because somebody disagrees with the government, all of a sudden you're a terrorist. Ja, wohl, mein Führer. Adolf. When the Führer says the country will survive, we all say ja wohl und spit right in his eye. How long are we going to put up with this? It's a constant, it's, it's constant from every damn department out there. Where's J. Edgar Hoover when we need him? He had all the files on these asshats. Could have shut this whole damn thing down month, uh, years ago. But because you disagree, you don't like to, you're opposed to taxes and you're opposed to some of their stupid regulations, all of a sudden you're an anti-government extremist and a terrorist. That's all they know. I've told you for months, the people that are paranoid and the people that are scared are the people that are in Washington, D.C. It's not the average Americans. The average Americans are getting fed up of having their constitution trampled on. They think the Constitution ought to be put on a four-inch tube and hanging in your bathroom so you can wipe your keister with it every damn time you go to the bathroom. That's all they care about. We're in power. You're not. Reality is there's a hell of a lot more of us armed than there are you, and it should be that way. That's the way the founders wanted it. They wanted our government scared of us, not the other way around. But we just continue on just letting these clowns do whatever the hell they want and we're getting crapped on. Our economy has gone to hell in a handbasket, but that's okay. But if you disagree with anything they say or with the taxes or the regulations, all of a sudden you're a terrorist. I got something you can terrorize. The brave men of our Federal Bureau of Investigation shut down an Amish farm for selling fresh milk. You, turn, you look at that piece of crap, Homeland Security, Transportation and Safety Administration, we are spending billions of dollars, and what have we got our FBI doing? Oh, they're going out to the Amish farmer who's selling raw milk. Oh, my gosh. 
This guy here, now there, there's a major thing. Why don't you turn around? Hey, you know what? If you go into Chicago, I bet you can find a kid with half a joint and you can lock him up too. Don't worry about the criminals out there. Although you'd have to go to Washington to catch the criminals. We have an entire Federal Bureau of Investigation. They have caught more, supposedly caught more terrorists or attempted terrorists or busted up terrorist plots than TSA could ever hope to see. And we keep on sinking more and more money so these professional asshats can get rich. They can just turn around and just rake in the money and to hell with the American people. And I'm going to get to that at the, in the next uh, in the next segment. And if what I'm going to tell you in the next segment doesn't have you just throwing up on the floor, nothing will. But they went. <laughs> it was a two-year fight to shut down an Amish farmer who was selling fresh milk, who was selling fresh raw milk to eager consumers in Washington region after a judge this month banned Daniel Alger from selling his milk across state lines. And this is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com, theinformationnation.com. We've calmed down since the last time. And if you believe that, <laughs> the FDA has won a two-year fight to shut down an Amish farmer who's selling fresh raw milk to eager consumers in the Washington region after a judge this month banned Daniel Alger from selling his milk across state lines, and he told his customers he'll shut the farm down altogether. Another small businessman going out of business. Gee, I wonder why. The decision was <clears throat> has en enraged Mr. Alger's supporters, some of whom have been buying from him for six years and say the government is interfering with their parental right to feed their children. But the Food and Drug Administration, which launched a full investigation, complete with a 5 a.m. surprise inspection, 5 o'clock in the morning, he was probably up milking the cows, you bunch of meatheads. And straw purchase sting operation against Mr. Alger's Rainbow Acre Farms near Lancaster. Said the unpasteurized milk is unsafe, <clears throat> excuse me, and said it was exercising its due authority to stop its sale from one state to another. Adding to Mr. Alger's trouble, Judge Lawrence F. Stingel, St Stingel, whatever, said if he found if he is found to violate the law again, he will have to pay the FDA's cost for investigating and prosecuting him. He is paying the cost through his taxes, you meet Ed. Where'd they get this stupid ass hat? His customers are wary of talking publicly, fearing the FDA will come after them. I can't believe in 2012 the federal government is raiding Amish farmers at gunpoint all over a basic human right to eat natural food, said one who asked not to be named, but who got weekly shipments of eggs, milk, honey, and butter from Rainbow uh, Acres. In Maryland, they forced taxpayers to pay for abortion, but God forbid we want the same milk our grandparents drank. And that they're absolutely right. They are 100% absolutely right. They're taking away your rights as parents. They're taking away your rights as free citizens. All to be tucked into this little slave uh, government that they want to put into effect so they can all make Barack Hussein Obama, a.k.a. Barry Satoro, a happy man. Here it comes. They can stick this one right up their chocolate whiz wing and break it off. They continue to do this. We have supposedly terrorists around every corner. A little kid with a lunchbox goes into school. They grab him. They strip search him, and they check that lunchbox to see if there's any bombs in there. He could be a terrorist. We got all this money to spend investigating a small farm, a small businessman, who's not doing anything but his business. He's not doing anything but running his farm and selling to his customers. So let me use a liberal analogy on this. If people didn't want it, they wouldn't buy it, just like if you don't like what's on TV, change the channel. So why don't we do that? Why don't we just leave the man alone? He's not hurting anybody. 
Why do we need the FDA sticking their nose in everybody else's business? And I'm going to tell you something else. And here it comes because I saw this on the on TV the other night. I was watching a news channel, and during the during the break, there was an ad on there for FDA approved vitamins, and they're coming from big pharma. This is what they want to do. They're going to shut down the businessmen. They're going to shut down all the people that make vitamins and everything so big pharma can make more money. It's all about the money. And I yearn for the day when I turn on the idiot box and I see them all standing up the wall being shot for high treason and misdemeanors, high crimes and misdemeanors against the republic of the United States of America. Yes, republic. This is not a democracy. This is a republic. And to tell you the truth, it would be worthwhile to have the drones then because we could drone them. Don't have to drown them. We can drone them. So here we go. I promise you one that would really turn your stomach. The White House announces plans on Monday to help Arab Spring countries swept by revolutions with more than $800 million in economic aid while maintaining U.S. military aid to Egypt. In his annual budget message to Congress, President Barry Satoro asked that the military aid to Egypt be kept in recent level, at levels of recent years, $1.3 billion. Despite a crisis triggered by an Egyptian probe targeting American democracy active, uh, activists, the proposals are part of Obama's budget request for fiscal year 2013, which begins October 1st. His requests need to be approved by Congress. He ain't going to have a problem with that. Them, them people are idiots. Where some lawmakers want to cut overseas spending to address the U.S. budget shortfalls and are particularly angry at Egypt. Obama proposes 51 0.6 billion in funding for the U.S. State Department and foreign aid overall, when 8.2 billion in assistance to war zones is included. The core budget for the category would increase by 1.6 percent, officials said. Most of the economic aid to Arab Spring countries, 770 million, would go to establish new Middle East and North Africa incentive fund, the president said in his budget plan. <clears throat> we haven't got a damn pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, and we're going to give all this money to somebody else. There is a total disdain for the American people in Washington. Total disdain. They're going to do nothing but give the money to their friends. My analogy on the whole thing is you're sitting at home. Your neighbor across the street could use a little extra food. So you take it over across the street and you give them a little bit extra food. So you're helping them feed his family while your kids are at home starving. Thanks, Dad. You know, you can't have it both ways. You're either going to take care of the American people or you're just going to let us die and rot and become a third world country where we can all walk around and hope like hell we've got shoes while the rest of the world lives off the... F they've, they've been sucking us dry for years. The rest of the vampires in the world have been sucking this country dry for years. And the American people say, well, we got to do something to help those people. Well, guess what? We haven't got it to give anymore. How do you give somebody something you don't have? And why would you possibly give somebody something not only that you don't have, but at the cost of your own family? This guy's a piece of garbage. You're absolutely right, Cracker, picking the bones. They're going to pick the bones dry and take every little piece of meat right off your bones. And it doesn't matter to them. It doesn't matter one bit. Because they have all their rich friends. This idiot, they're talking about being able to spend one billion dollars on his campaign. What idiot in his right mind would spend a billion dollars for a $400,000 a year job? And we've returned. This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com. Theinformationnation.com. 
We were just talking about all the money that we want to give to all these people there with the Arab Springs and all the rest of it. Uh, that was from Reuters. And now, according to Reuters, Egypt's state media accuses U.S. of spreading anarchy. State-run newspapers slashed accusations, splashed accusations of a U.S. plan to spread anarchy in Egypt across their front pages on Tuesday. Escalating a dispute, Washington says, must be resolved to ensure their continued military cooperation. I got a better idea. Why don't we just turn around and tell them, fine, we're going to take our money and go home and you can eat your sand. Based on remarks by a government minister, the headlines marked, Another low in the crisis between Washington and Cairo, triggered by the investigation into the U.S.-based non-governmental organizations that has led to criminal charges against Americans who have been prevented from leaving the country. America is behind the anarchy, declared the front page of El Gamhura newspaper. Americans funding aims to spread anarchy in Egypt, read the front page of El Harim newspaper the two papers are the papers are two of egypt's most widely distributed dailies fine we'll take our money and go home yeah just like a spoiled kid we'll take our ball and go home <laughs> the american american government allowed who was perceived as their friend to be thrown out of egypt and now they've got a nightmare going on over there See, the problem is with our government, they don't understand people. They just think, well, we're in power. These are tribal people, man. It's the same thing in Libya. You think Libya is going to be over? Libya is not going to be over for years. Because these are tribal people. Gaddafi kept them under control. Gaddafi had a tribal council that ruled that country. It wasn't Gaddafi. It was the tribal council. He was kind of like the spokesman. And now you've got to, you're going to have the problem in Egypt, and it just seems like our our, our State Department under Billary they don't know Jack. Oh yeah, she's she's looking to become the new head of the IMF. Yeah, that 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 tells you something. <clears throat> so as we continue with the corruption of this administration, federal funds flow to clean energy firms with Obama administration ties. This comes from the Washington Post, published February 14th. Uh, Sanja Waggel was a venture capitalist and Barack Obama fundraiser in 2008, rallying support through a group he headed known as Clean Tech for Obama. Shortly after Obama's election, he left his California firm to join the Energy Department, just as the administration embarked on a massive program to stimulate the economy with federal investment in clean energy technology firms. Following the uh, enduring Washington tradition, Waggle shifted from the private sector where his firm hoped to profit from federal investments to an insider seat in the Obama administration's $80 billion clean energy investment program. Gee, isn't that nice? He was one of several players in venture capital, which was providing financial backing to start up clean tech companies who moved into the energy department at the time when the energy was seeking outside expertise in the field. At the same time, their industry had a huge stake in decisions about which companies would receive government loans, grants, and support. During the next three years, the department provided $2.4 billion in public funding to clean energy companies in which Waggle's former firm, Vantage Point Venture Partners, had invested. The Washington Post analyzed uh, uh, analysis found overall the post um, the post found that 3.9 billion in federal grants and financing flowed to 21 companies backed by firms with connections to five Obama administration staffers and adver uh, advisors. Wonder where your money's going? You wonder where the money went? I don't. I don't wonder whatsoever. This is the game that's being played on us. It's the same thing with the bailouts. You know, we had all these wonderful bailouts. They should have had, should have all got up there and said, wonderful bailout. But we had all these wonderful bailouts that went to all of their buddies. And <laughs> they got the mine and you got the shaft. And why do I say that? 
<clears throat> let's follow the logical progression of things. Had they given the money to the American people, the American people would have paid off credit cards, would have caught up on their mortgages. Where would the money have gone? It would have gone to the banks. But instead, they peed all over you, gave it to their buddies who in turn bought other banks, went on vacations, gave out lavish bonuses, had great parties, and nobody's in jail. The people who created the problem are not in jail. They're partying. And the American people are wondering, am I going to be able to make my mortgage next month? Or they're wondering, am I going to still be here next month? This is the government that these people wanted. This is the government that they got. I'm glad, they're, I'm glad they all got together and made history. Unfortunately, you dragged down the rest of us right along with you. Oh, Obama, he talks so nice. They're going to take an Amish farmer and tell him how to run his business. But none of these crooks are going to jail. Not a damn one. There you go, America. Be proud of your president. You put him in office. Those of you that love this man, you put him in office. New CBO report disseminates Obamanomics. Real unemployment hits 15%. The rate of unemployment in the United States has exceeded 8% since February 2009, making the past three years the longest stretch of high unemployment in the country since the Great Depression. Moreover, the Congressional Budget Office projects that unemployment rate will remain above 8% until 2014. The official unemployment rate excludes those individuals who would like to work but have not searched for a job in the past four weeks, as well as those who are working part-time but would prefer to work full-time. If those people were counted among the unemployed, the unemployment rate in January of 2012 would have been about 15%. Compounding the problem of high unemployment, the shares of unemployed people looking for work for more than six months, referred to as long-term unemployed, topped 40% in December 2009 for the first time since 1948, when such data began to, become, uh, began to be collected. And it has remained above that level ever since. 15% unemployment? This guy is... This guy's going down in history. He's making Jimmy Carter look good. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I lived through the Carter years. People don't have jobs. And what they can get, minimum wage? Yeah, a lot of you could live on $8 an hour or $6 an hour. And this guy just sits back and he was just jumping up and down when, when it got below 9%. It's at 15%, you asshat. And he walks around. He is the most arrogant, narcissistic, SOB I've ever seen. And people love him. Am I missing something? Are my headphones on too tight? I got to be missing something here. Why would people love this guy? He's a piece of crap. You can't even find out anything about the guy. Everything's been locked up. You can't even find his damn birth certificate. You're supposed to be the, the, the editor of the Harvard Review. That's, one of, that's the most prestigious law review paper in colleges, and they can't find a damn thing that he ever wrote. And we've returned for the last 15 minutes of the show. Tonight went very fast. <clears throat> Did you know that the people in Kanadistan are smarter than the crooks in Chicago? Conservatives and enthusiasts cheer the end of the Long Gun Registry. This comes out of Ottawa. Canada by the News National Post. The conservative government says the MPs will celebrate after a historic vote to end the long gun registry Wednesday evening, despite vehement opposition to the move in Quebec and much of urban Canada. Public Safety Minister Vic Toes told reporters Wednesdays, hours before the vote, that the government's actions were long overdue. It does nothing to help put an end to gun crimes, nor has it saved one Canadian life. It criminalizes hardworking and law-abiding citizens such as farmers and sports shooters, and it has been a billion-dollar boondoggle left to us by the previous liberal government. 
yeah, I guess what you could do if a guy comes up to you and he's got an illegal gun, you could always have slapped him with your register, registration papers. Just goes to show you, people up in Kanadistan are smarter than the people in Chicago and smarter than the people in Illinois, or at least our government. The people want it. The government says, no, you're not responsible. We got to take care of you kiddies. Federal audit. <clears throat> the first top-to-bottom audit of the Federal Reserve uncovered eye-popping new details about how the U.S. provided a whopping $16 trillion, not billion, trillion in secret loans to bail out American and foreign banks and businesses during the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. An amendment by Senator Bernie Sanders to the Wall Street uh, reform law passed one year ago this week directed the Government Accountability Office to conduct a study. As a result of this audit, we now know the Federal Reserve provided more than $16 trillion in total financial assistance to some of the largest financial institutions and corporations in the United States and throughout the world, said Sanders. This is a clear case of socialism for the rich and rugged you're on your own individualism for everybody else. So stick that in your chocolate whiz wang, America. The bankers are fine. They got theirs. 16 trillion. And so did all the other foreign countries that hate us. But we gave them money. But pack your shit up and get out of the house because they're going to foreclose on it. And the foreclosures are going to keep on coming for quite a while. And so are the short sales. And so is the fact that your property isn't worth squat. But they got the money to throw all their friends. Now you want to talk about this is the last one I'm going to do tonight. Now I got a few things to say. Family in jail for Eric Holder's crime. Investigation into Gunwalker scandal, codenamed Fast and Furious, <clears throat> has passed the one-year mark. During that time, congressional investigators have put barely a chip into the stone, into the stone wall established by Eric Holder and his Justice Department. So far, few, fewer than 20 percent of the documents requested by the congressional investigators have been provided by the DOJ. There have been a couple of resignations and few reassignments. And one Justice Department official has refused to testify on Fifth Amendment grounds. But so far, there hasn't been the slightest indication that anyone involved is going to spend a single day in jail. In contrast, a family in New Mexico has now been languishing in jail almost six months. They have been denied bail and all their assets have been seized. Congress, you limp-wristed bunch of garbage. You don't turn around and say, oh, well. We're going to threaten him with a subpoena. No, you give him the subpoena. He doesn't show up. You send the U.S. Marshals over. You grab this guy by the short hairs. You throw him in one of those FEMA camps, and you let him languish there for six months or a year, and then you call him before Congress and say, had enough. Now you're going to talk, or you're going back for another six months. Because under NDAA, you don't get a lawyer. We don't have to charge you with squat. We're going to lock your fanny up for the rest of your life, and nobody will ever know where you're at. But what have we got? We got John McCain. Not John Wayne, John McCain. John Wayne would have shot him in the head and moved on. But this is what goes on. They, they, they got a family down there that have been, if you read the whole article, go to my website, click on the link and go to the article and read what they've done to these people. It's unbelievable. Denied, a, denied bail and their assets have been seized. They've also, if I remember correctly in the article, they've been denied legal counsel. There's your America, people. You know, we got to stop with this politically correct crap. And all the rest of the garbage that's going on out there. And we got to start putting a little boot to ass. You know, if you haven't got the guts to do it, at least go into the voting booth and throw these pigs out. And put somebody in there with enough stones to get this country back to where it should be and not to where in the heck Obama wants to take it. You people that are police officers out there, you're going to have the same problem. Because it's going to come to a point where you're going to get tired of beating on the American people for no reason whatsoever other than help some damn banker put more money in his pocket while they take your pension. The same thing with you firefighters out there who are going to keep on fighting fires and everything else until they take your pension, until they cut your, cut your pay, until what used to be five squad cars in an area is now one 
to where they make your job so difficult and they're going to do it for a reason because then they can move into troops. Oh, they're not, they're not done with us by a long shot. Well, anyhow, it's been a heck of a night. I'm really glad that you, all you people stopped by, you know, and uh, listen to me rant for two hours. <laughs> but, uh, no, we really, we at Orion really do appreciate all of our listeners. Whether they're in a chat room or just listening on the computer or listening at micro 1650 AM, whatever you're doing, we appreciate it. Listening to us on TalkStream. You know, you can go and download the TalkStream app and catch us right on your cell phone if you happen to be going out or something. Thank you, Cracker. You know, same thing, Ancient. Thank you. I'm glad people enjoy what I do. Of course, if they didn't enjoy what I do, somebody else would be doing what I do. Thanks, Road Dog. Anti. <clears throat> You know, while you guys are in the chat room, if you want to throw questions in there or something, you know, that, that's perfectly fine. If we've got a topic going, you want to add a little something, um, be glad to answer them the best that I can. We have a good time here on Orion. Thanks, Adolph. All I can tell you is we got a young man coming up for the next two hours, Madison Rupert. And he does, really does a heck of a job. He does a very nice show. And um, ah, let me see here so we can catch everybody up with this. End the Lie Radio with Madison Rupert. Great young guy out of the West Coast. Does a heck of a show. Gives you a lot of good information. Got a heck of a website, endthelie.com, uh, I believe it is. Not sure. But tune into him. Also, don't forget, for all you night owls out there, you missed the show today, which was Investigative Journal with Greg, Greg Szymanski. He's just been on for a couple of weeks. Catch it next week. He's, at, he's on at midnight Eastern time, first thing Sunday morning, 11 o'clock Central time on Saturday night, and um, 9 o'clock on the, on the left coast. He's at, he, he lives on the left coast, so you people out there ought to, ought to enjoy the heck out of him. He's a great guy. All I can tell you is keep listening to Orion, you know, support the network. Um, we rely on you. It's something to keep, to keep giving you information that you can use, that you can talk to your friends about. You know, you've got Popeye, you've got Joe Joseph, you've got Jay Jinx, you've got Jimmy X. You've got a whole lineup of shows here that are done for you. <laughs> 